I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend and I hope you're staying safe at home. Well, today I want to talk about the health of your heart. Do you know the number one disease that kills most people across our country? The number one disease across the United States and our country that causes the most deaths is heart disease. I want you to reflect on this for a minute. Most of us get killed by heart disease. We are more nutritionists. We are more doctors. We are more gyms. We have fancy technology and medication. We have superfoods. We have meditation classes happening all around. We have everything, yet year on year, cardiovascular diseases kill the most people in our country. I'm not gonna talk about the world. I'm gonna talk about our country in millions, in millions. There's something wrong with the system. Am I saying there's anything wrong with the doctors? Absolutely not, we need them. We need them. Is there anything wrong with medicine? Absolutely not, we need medication as well. I read a very interesting article in the Hindu Sun Times, uh, Hindu Sun Times a, a couple of days ago. They said when you fly, when you get onto an aircraft, you have a one in 10 lakh chance, a one in 10 hundred thousand chance to suffer from a problem in the plane, like a plane crash or anything that goes wrong. When you undergo a medical treatment, you have a one in 300 chance of that medical treatment taking your life away. We need to understand the importance of the health of our heart. As citizens, we always look at these numbers. We look at these numbers and we say, oh wow, they're big numbers, but do we do anything about it? Is there something that we can do about it? We've been lied for the longest time and we're seeing that today. We constantly move from one medication to another. Like I said, we need that. We need doctors, we need medicine, we need uh, heart transplants, we need stents, we need everything. But the flaw in our system, and this is everyone's fault, the flaw in our system is we have not looked at what the root cause of cardiovascular disease is, and we are not addressing that. We know what causes cardiovascular disease, but what are we doing about it to address the root cause? Every time we have a symptom of cardiovascular disease, we get a new drug. The symptom doesn't get suppressed, we increase the dosage of the new drug. Finally, we have the second side effect and the third side effect and we have more and more inflammation and then we have death and in the autopsy report it's written by inflammation or cholesterol and that's another body buried or cremated or whatever it is that's done to that dead body and we move on with life. We move on with prayer and hope and spending more money thinking we're going to get better but the statistics of cardiovascular deaths increase year after year. We can't live without a functioning of our heart. We need a change in mindset right now to understand that we do not have to die this way. Cardiovascular diseases do not have to happen. Of course, there's destiny, but then there's our lifestyle. We don't have to have these diseases take away our life. And if we get these diseases, yes, there are a ton of things that you can do to get better. We don't have to die because of our disease. Every day, look in the media, look in the newspapers. People over the age of 20 years old and above are getting diagnosed with cardiovascular disorders from high blood pressure to, I'm gonna read the entire list. This is shameful more than anything else. A few people, very highly genetic, will get these conditions. They may not survive, they may die. What about the other population? So number one, what happens in cardiovascular uh, disease? heart disease, cardiac arrest, all of that stuff. We have something called vascular injury. We have arteries. These arteries have the job of providing clean, nutrient-rich oxygen and nutrients to our heart and trillions of cells in the human body. If they cannot do their job, trillions of cells are deprived of oxygen and nutrition. That leads to discomfort and disease. If our heart, which is like an organ and a muscle, does not have the right amount of cardio flow, blood flow, the heart starts to die. The heart starts to respond by creating inflammation in our arteries and then eventually it gives us signals like your cardiac arrest is a signal that your heart is not working the right way. When you get high blood pressure, it is a signal to you that your heart is not working the right way. Most people will go to their doctors, take a drug, bring down their blood pressure and say, hey, I'm healthy. No, nope, you're not healthy you still have high blood pressure, which is only suppressed. You need to be making changes to get rid of that completely. Now let's look at some of the things that cause high blood pressure. Everyone only thinks it's cholesterol. 
oh sorry, cardiovascular disease. Everyone thinks that it's high blood pressure that creates stroke and it is cholesterol. Well, you are misinformed. Now I'm gonna read you a list of things that leads to cardiovascular disease. Number one, high blood pressure. Number two, it is not cholesterol. It is your high triglyceride levels. Number three, tobacco and smoking. Number four, alcoholism. Binge drinking alcohol. Doesn't matter whether you have a size zero figure or you have a six pack. The internal damage is real. Then we have diabetes. No, I don't think you were expecting that. You say, Luke, diabetes has nothing to do with my heart. Diabetes has everything to do with my insulin and my blood sugar levels. Diabetes and insulin resistance has everything to do with your heart and your kidneys. And your kidneys. When you have a combination of high blood pressure and you have a combination of diabetes, you better start taking, you, you better start making changes because the next thing that's gonna hurt is your heart and your kidneys. Now you'll say, how come no one told me about that? Because guess what? Guess what? The current healthcare system, which I have nothing against, treats your disease like a body part. Diabetes, oh, it's a problem of high blood sugar levels, it increases, it involves your pancreas. Okay, kidney problem, let's treat the symptoms of a kidney. But your kidney, your heart, your liver, your brain, your blood circulatory system, your eliminatory system are all interconnected. If you have a problem with your blood sugar levels, you want to look at your pancreas, you want to look at your heart, you want to look at your kidneys, you want to look at your gut. Everything is interconnected. And because the world has shown us to dissect it and only look at a heart for heart problems and not connect it with your gut, your kidney, your blood pressure, your diabetes and everything else, that's why so many people are dying despite having so many doctors, nutritionists, medicine, gyms, superfoods, and everything else. Obesity causes heart disease, okay? Then we have poor food, poor nutrition. Eating junk food and processed food equals inflammation. Most people with cardiac arrests have died because of inflammatory conditions in their arteries. Very few people die because of cholesterol. Most people die because of inflammation and that can be caused by your poor nutrition. Inactivity, a sedentary lifestyle is the easiest way. Any medical professional who is putting you on a heart medicine needs to tell you, my medicine is useless unless you learn to eat better, unless you start, start learning to move more, get rid of your sedentary lifestyle, you learn to sleep better and you learn to control your stress levels. Otherwise, my medicine is not gonna help you. That is the truth. That is the truth. And since we don't get that, we have more and more disease happening. The next thing, sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea. Yeah, take a machine, you'll sleep better, but solve your sleep apnea problem because that, is lead that leads to heart disease. Sleep deprivation. All the young CEOs and all the young people who have been all over the news who have died over the last couple of years, they were sleeping two to three hours, most of them, not to generalize. They had great diets, great jobs, all of that stuff. Sleep deprivation has every medical and scientific connection with inflammation in the heart, strokes, blood pressure, and everything else. So you can go to the most famous cardiologist in the world, you can get all the most famous drugs that are available, but if you don't sleep well, guess what? Your drug can't fix that for you. Your statin cannot fix what sleep deprivation does to the heart, does to the immune system, does to the brain. And then we have stress deeply rooted emotional stress, chronic stress. Medical literature shows us the connection between stress and cardiovascular disease. Let's move to the gut. There's more and more evidence-based research showing us how your gut is also connected to your heart health. Today we know, we know for sure, that if you don't have the right amount of good gut bacteria, it also leads to insulin resistance and makes your diabetes worse. Well, today we also know that it also creates inflammation in your heart and it also has every connection to do with depression. So you see, depression, oh, I feel bad in my mind. Let me go and take a pill that will make me feel better. Have you even looked at your gut health? Take your pill, but you need to look at your gut health. Half the people who we've seen and we've just changed their gut health, they start to feel better and better in their mind. You see, the human body is a whole. You are a whole. You're not a car. You can't take a part of an engine or a part of the car and only look after that part. That's a car. You are a human being that's made up of trillions of cells that work in harmony with each other. There's a problem in your liver, there's a, possibly a problem in your thyroid. There's a problem in your thyroid, you possibly gotta, gotta, gotta look at your liver at the same time and your gut and your immune system. Well, you see now, by now you see where we've gone wrong and why more and more people are dying. Because we've only treated the symptom. 
we have only treated the symptom. So what's my advice if you want to prevent the onset of heart disease and even if you have heart disease right now, what are the things that can change it? More drugs? Absolutely not. How many more band-aids are you going to put on your heart? How many more stents are you going to put into your heart? You see, your body has a simple intelligent process called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the health of your blood vessels. If you have poor angiogenesis in your body, you don't just have an issue of heart health, you have a problem of even cancer. The inability for your blood vessels to grow and to stop growth at the right time. How many of us have heard of people who have a 96 to 95% blockage in one artery? These people can still continue to live beautiful lives because guess what? If angiogenesis is working well, your heart will automatically start making new capillaries because there's an artery blocked. Look at the beauty of nature, okay? Look at an open space with water, okay? If water is blocked, it will develop a new channel. It'll find a new channel to flow. The flow continues. That's nature. We come in and put in all our concrete constructions and everything else. We cut nature and we block and then there are floods. The same thing with your heart. If you have proper angiogenesis, most people will never die of a blockage in their heart. They will not die because of blockage in their heart. Yes, there's fear psychosis to show you what may happen, but you will not die. Of course, you're a smoker, you keep drinking all of that stuff, you create more blockage and eventually you will have a cardiac arrest and you will die. But look at nature. The heart knows what to do when there is blockage number one and then blockage number two. So you look at it, you look at your scan and you say, yeah, I have two blockages. Okay, there'll be new capillaries. But now, instead of taking a drug, a lifetime drug, do what your medical doctors tell you. You need to change your lifestyle so that you don't get more blockages. No one's telling you how to stop the blockages from happening. For that, I have four answers. Your nutrition, your exercise, your sleep, and your emotional wellness. These are the magic drugs. Take your, doc, take your medication if you have, but if you are not working on these four verticals, you will go on with more and more stents. I know people who have six stents. Come on, that's disgraceful. It is disgraceful. It only means one thing. You have not changed your lifestyle. You have not addressed the root cause of your problem. So you see, the fault is also with human beings. We don't want to change. We don't want to put an effort in our lifestyle. So we run to a quick fix. A quick fix is always sold to us. It always sounds appealing because, hey, take this quick fix. Go enjoy a biryani. Don't stop drinking. Have a couple of drinks is what cardiologists tell people as well. It's okay. Have two drinks a day. That is what medical science tells us. Two drinks a day. And the patient is on medication thinking they're healthy. They're still sick. It's about time people woke up. Because if that medication alone was working, there's one thing I ask you to reflect on. Heart disease should be decreasing. I'm not here to put down medicine, but if medicine alone is your solution, why is heart disease increasing and not decreasing? Because there's a gap, and that gap is your lifestyle. Now you gotta take accountability and responsibility, and if your doctor gives you a pill and doesn't tell you to change your lifestyle, you change your doctor. Like I said, I have nothing against doctors. I have everything against poor medicine. I have everything against poor nutrition, poor doctors, poor nutritionists. You gotta be efficient. As a healer, as a doctor, your job is to prevent, not just treat. And if your doctor is not showing you that path, if your nutritionist is not showing you that path and only putting band-aids on you all the time, change them. They are only concerned about suppressing the symptom. You gotta be healing. The oath that everyone takes is to prevent and not do harm. Not just medicate, medicate, medicate and kill people out there. So like I said, reflect on this once more. If the medicine worked alone, why is heart disease increasing? It's because we've not looked at lifestyle. So when it comes to nutrition, there's poor nutrition. The more sugar you eat, the more junk you eat, the more ultra processed food you eat you are gonna have more heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and everything else. If you are sedentary, you are gonna have more disease. If you are sleep deprived, you are gonna have more disease. And if you are out of control with your stress and your emotions, okay? Half the people who come to me, businessmen, building tycoons, look, 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 we need the medicine. We can't follow a diet. We can't do this. We need to build our business. I can't help you. I can't help you. If you are not willing to make a change, okay? You can continue building your business for maybe another six months, and then you're not gonna be able to do anything. Might as well slow down right now, make the lifestyle changes so you can still run your business. 
Not come to a point where you gotta die and not run your business at all. That is called balance. And my friends, this is important that we need to understand. You can keep chasing quick fixes. You can keep chasing instant gratification. Every time you see programs where people say diet, you know, you lose weight. You don't have to diet and exercise. Right then you know it's a scam. When you see it as a medicine that doesn't require you to change your lifestyle, that is a scam. Take your medicine as a crutch, but change your lifestyle. If you don't, more and more people are gonna die every year. And you know what? I think it's about time human beings start getting fed up of this. We think we're resilient. Okay, people die all the time, we're sad for a few days and then we go back to our same old crappy life until the next person dies and the next person dies. That's become part of the human cycle. But it doesn't have to be that way. It can stop. It can stop if you address your lifestyle and take the medication that you have to. When you take a medication, know the side effects. So you can put in the relevant lifestyle changes to manage the side effects of your drug and then you work with addressing the root cause of what has made you get heart disease. There is always an answer. Things just don't happen. They just don't happen. There is always a trigger. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Remember that. So more of your actions are in the direction towards heart disease. That is exactly what is gonna come your way. No one escapes it. No matter who you are, what color you are, what designation you are, at what bank balance you have, the law is the same. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That is the truth of human life, nature, and the body. So all the people dying out there, it's gotta stop, and it can stop. It can stop. When you look at the beauty of research, all the research will show favorable to the drugs that you're on. When you look at preventive medicine, oh, still in research, not much evidence. What does that tell you? They're not studying it. No one is studying prevention. No one is investing in research for prevention. Why? Because there's no money in that. There is no money to be made in prevention. So can, do we go on complaining and blaming and whining? No, there is never gonna be money put into prevention. What do we do? We take responsibility and accountability for our own health and we start investing in our own lifestyle that can help us preventing the onset of disease because no one else is gonna do it for you. No one else is gonna do it for you. You gotta do it for yourself. Have a great day everyone, until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep.